Welcome to today's Pastor Perspective. I'm Ken Gray, serving here at Calvary Life Family Worship Center in Cheshire, Connecticut. Today we continue our devotional study in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7. I'm going to begin reading with verse 18. Then David the king went in and sat down before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me this far? In the previous section of this chapter, David had presented Nathaniel the, Nathan the prophet with an idea, a good idea, but it was not God's idea. And David was focused at that time more on his own thinking and planning. But God shifted all of that and God said, no, David, you're not going to build a house for me. I'm going to build a house for you. And so David is now uh, presenting himself before the Lord in prayer. But notice what we read in that, that it says, the, the Dave, then David the king went in and sat before the Lord. We would be far more, uh, what is the word, profitable in our works if we were doing it as a consequence of setting before the Lord than setting around thinking with our own mind. And David here, as, the, as he sets before the Lord, he is humbled by God's presence. It says in verse 19, and yet this was insignificant in your eyes, O Lord God, for you have spoken also of the house of your servant concerning the distant future. And this is the custom of man, O Lord God. Again, what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God, for the sake of your word and according to your own heart, you have done all this greatness to let your servant know. For this reason, you are great, O Lord, there is none like you, and there is no God beside you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. David, when he comes before the Lord after having received the prophetic word, and he humbly prays, he's acknowledging God in all of his greatness. He realizes nothing that he's enjoying at the moment is a result of his own efforts. It's a result of the favor of God and the presence of God that has been on his life. And then he goes on to thank God, not only for what he's doing in his own personal life, but what he's doing with the entire nation of Israel, the church of God at that time, you might say. It says here for, in verse 24, for you have established for yourself your people Israel as your own people forever. And you, O Lord, have become their God. Now, therefore, O Lord God, the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and his house, confirm it forever and do so as you have spoken, that your name may be magnified forever by saying, the Lord of hosts is God over Israel, and may the house of your servant David be established before you. So David's motivation, even in praying in correspondence with the, the prophetic word of God, is not his own self-interest. His motivation is that the name of God would be magnified that his name would be lifted up in the earth, that the people of God would reflect the nature of God. And he, he basically, in this whole passage here, you see that David's heart is pure. It's important for us to be attentive to God's word, to be attentive to his prophetic voice in our lives, because in so doing and humbling ourselves before God in prayer and recognizing his greatness and all that we have comes from him, we come to a place where we recognize what in the New Testament said, Jesus says that we are to do our good works in a way that glorifies our Father in heaven. David's interest was seeing the name of God glorified. Listen to these last uh, couple of verses, beginning with verse 28. Now, O Lord God, you are God and your words are truth. And you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now, therefore... May it please you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing, may the house of your servant be blessed forever. David concludes his prayer with this great acknowledgement that God has spoken his word and promised these things, and he's praying in agreement with the will of God. What a powerful thing is to pray in agreement with God. He basically is saying amen to a prophetic word that God had given him. It's so much better for us to sit in God's presence 
and humbly call upon who He is, acknowledging all that He's done for us personally and all that He's done for His people around us. When we do this, we are in a much better position to have a prosperous future and a legacy to follow. Now, as we recognize these things, I pray that you would also come into an awareness of this reality in your own personal life. So let me pray with you, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us personally, all that you've done through us personally, but more importantly, what you're doing in your church to bring a great recognition to who you are in the world. Father, may our lives personally and as a church bring honor to your great name. And may we recognize it's not all about us, but it's about seeing you honored in the world around us. And we pray, Father, all of this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, God bless you and thank you for listening to today's Pastor's Perspective. We'll continue in 2 Samuel chapter 8 next week, and we will look forward to being with you then.